Hey guys, so I'm printing with the Cobra S1 combo. I got a dragon from MacGyver, multicolor dragon from MacGyver. I'm using four colors right now. I'm using a PLA. There's a white, orange, pink, and blue. These two are from Amelin, and these two are from Anycubic. I wanted to kind of give you guys a little update on how this printer is going. So far, it's doing fantastic. This is my first long print. It's about 15 hours for this guy. I did have one small hiccup while I was looking at the app. While it was about 50% through, it said it detected spaghetti and it paused itself. And then I checked the printer and there wasn't any spaghetti at all, so I just resumed it. it seems like there was a little error in that AI detection system but no big deal. There, there actually wasn't a print failure at all. The camera just thought it detected a string pretty much and then it paused the print. So I'm not really sure if that's a common issue or not. I don't think it is because it only happened like for one moment. Really the only thing that I can hear the most is the Ace Pro unit up here because it has fans for heating up the filament and drying the filament out. But other than that, the movements are really smooth the overall quality of the print is pretty good. It's pretty good quality, I would say. I didn't really tune anything like temperature settings or anything. I just sliced this file and sent it. Um, but the temperature settings definitely could be a little bit better. Um, it's at 205C right now at standard speed. Let's go check out the slicer and give you a little rundown on that. Here's a little rundown on the slicer. I didn't change any settings at all. I'm just using the included profile for the 0.2 millimeter layer height on the Cobra S1 combo that's built in. This slicer is Anycubic's next slicer. It's based off of Orca Slicer, which is really similar to Bamboo Lab software. There's only 221 filament changes on this bad boy. You can see how much filament it uses and all that good stuff, just like a bamboo slicer. And this uh, workbench page is extremely helpful. I can control the printer from my computer wirelessly. You can see down here that 37C is what my ACE unit is set to. So my filament is actually drying while it's printing, which is a huge plus compared to Bamboo Lab and any of the other multi-material units, this one will actually dry your filament while it's printing. It's been printing for 13 hours and 43 minutes. It's got three hours and 45 left. You can check out the bed temp, nozzle temp, the fans, you can turn on and off the light. And down here, one of the most important parts is my cat. You can see the camera. So here's the camera quality. It's not quite 60 FPS, I don't think. The camera's not quite 60 FPS, but it is like 1080p it looks like. And here is where I got the file from. I got it from printables.com, which is a great website. It's owned by Prusa Company, and you can download a whole bunch of files on this website. So here's the sliced file. Just like with every other slicer, you can look at every single layer and all the movements the printer will make. It'll show you exactly the code, the G code, for every movement and everything the printer does is through G code. You can see my quality settings here. I'll just scroll through there. This is the default slicer setting. Here's the strength settings. I didn't change anything at all. Speed settings. So we're going to 200 to 300 millimeters per second, which is generally what I like to run like all the bamboos on and stuff like that. That's kind of the sweet spot. Support, there's no support. Here you can change all of the prime tower settings as well. And the one thing I did change is the brim. I turned off the brim because on this particular model, the brim is like really hard to take off. And she's walking on my keyboard. All right, girl. And you can see I have AI detection on right there. That's gonna pretty much use the camera system to detect any spaghetti defects or anything like that. And hopefully the printer will catch it and pause itself. Now, like I said earlier, this model was about 50% through and the camera detected something and it did pause it. I looked at the print and it was fine. So I assume it was just kind of like a little glitch or something. What I think actually happened, these little orange pieces right here that stick into the dragon's nose, I believe that the camera saw that. As, as you can see, some print head moves out of the way. 
let's see if I can show you guys. It, it was more visible early on in the print because now it's getting blocked by the print itself. Let me see if I can show you what I think happened with the AI detection. So if you can see that little orange piece right where my mouse is, I, I think that the printer thought that was a string and it saw it and it paused it. That's my guess because it only happened once and it never alerted me again. So I'm not really too sure, but that's kind of my theory on it. I can look at all of my printers that's connected through Wi-Fi, like my Cobra 3 and my Cobra 2 Plus. So yeah, that's kind of a little rundown of the Anycubic neck slicer. I'm going to jump back to the printer and give you some more sound checks so you guys can get a sense of the volume of this printer. So I'm just going to walk up to the printer and then you'll probably be able to start hearing it. So So I'm now I'm going to open the door and then you'll be able to hear it again. Yeah, guys, I honestly, I think this printer is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, it's a Core XY printer. It's high speed. It's stable. As you can see, I'm at standard speed. And this little menu, this whole UI system is fairly intuitive. You know, I can move the printer. I can look at all this stuff as well. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Sound, language. You can set the screen off time, which is really cool. I'm gonna set that to five minutes. And there's the support, and then you can do a whole system restore there. And it'll show you a bunch of stuff there. We've got three hours and 38 minutes left. I'm gonna cut back. I'm gonna go to bed, and then when I wake up, hopefully this will be done. Hopefully there's no errors, but I'll let you see the final product and I'll also be posting it on my Instagram as well as YouTube as I guess I'll catch you in the morning when this is done. Alright guys, the, the print is done and it took 14 hours and 40 minutes to finish. Let's get this print off the build plate and see how it did. We're going to go back to just regular old lighting, some beautiful white light. So let's take a look. So my filament's a tad stringy, and you know, that's not really the printer's fault, that is the filament's fault because it looks like my filament was a little bit wet. So it looks like my filament could have been dried a little bit more, it's a bit stringy, but the overall quality is pretty good. This is at 0 0.2 millimeter layer height at about 200 to 300 millimeters per second. So let's get it off the build plate and see how it did. Oh, wow, I didn't even have to. So yeah, cool, I, I just had to wait for it to cool down. And I mean, it's, yeah, the quality is there, guys. Yeah, it's a little bit stringy because of my filament, but it's not necessarily the printer's fault. It's more on me. Let's take a closer look. Let's get the light on here. And this is 0 0.2 millimeters. So not, it's not the finest resolution that you can choose. I just went with the standard default profile. I think it did pretty good. I'm not seeing any indications that the belts need to be tuned. The layers seem to be all in the right spots. Of course the resolution is low. There's a little bit of a failed overhang, but I think it's just the model that could be a little better designed. That's a 15 hour print. I think it turned out really good. The bottom layers are good. I don't see really any elephant's feet on these bottom orange layers which is awesome. The small pink parts are clean. Just a tad stringy though, but I don't see any small holes in the print. 
that would indicate a problem with the extruder. It looks pretty good, guys. And like I said, I downloaded this model from Printables, and it's from MacGyver. It looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I would say for, for a budget core XY printer, I would say that is acceptable. And let's take off these little guys too. So that'll come off just like that. And here's the prime tower. It's pretty small. And I'll also show you the waste as well from the multicolor setup. I love these little notches in the back. It's super easy to align that perfectly. Every time, just boom, perfect alignment and easy and quick. Okay, let's put the little nose pieces in real quick. Yeah, I think they go like this. So yeah, that's the finished model right there. And let me know what you guys think down below. For a 15 hour print, 0 0.2 millimeter layer height, I think it did fantastic. Of course, we'll have to test this printer out more and see how it does. But so far, I think it's pretty good. The model did have a little overhang fail right there. Looks pretty decent. All right, so now I'm gonna go dig back there and get all of the waste, and I'm gonna show you that. All right, guys, here is all of the waste. I can tell you that it is, in fact, a significant amount. So that is a decent amount of waste. I would say it's a significant amount. I have yet to find in the slicer the ability to adjust the purge settings. I know on the Cobra 3 combo over there, they added it in in a future firmware update, so I'm expecting this printer to get that update as well. You can actually adjust the purge settings while you're printing on the Cobra 3. So yeah, a lot of people were asking about the waste and if there's a way to adjust it. So far, I haven't found it out yet, uh, but like I said, the Cobra 3 has that feature. Um, you can adjust the purge level while it's printing, which is pretty cool. So I'm expecting the Cobra S1 to get that same feature as well eventually. So I'm going to start the Dragon print again and then see if I can go into it and adjust the purge settings. If not, then it'll pr most likely come with a later update. So let that thing heat up real quick and do its thing for a minute. And I'm going to see if I can adjust the purge settings. So, a little update. I just started the printer, and good news, guys. You go into here, click the Ace Pro button, and click your filament, and you'll find flush volume that can go from 0.1 all the way to 3.0. So, this is really good news because I could have saved so much waste if I just adjusted these settings in the printer itself. Now, these settings are not available in the slicer. They're gonna be once you start printing. So I'm not sure how that works out when you go, every time you wanna do a new file, do you have to go in and adjust it for the new colors and all that, and new materials? I'm not sure if it saves into the file. That's like the cloud file I printed from, does this save, does it overwrite the file? I'm not sure. You might have to do this every time you print which is not a good sign, honestly, but I'm not sure if you have to adjust the volume every time that you start a print. We'll have to figure that out, but you can change the flush volume inside of the printer settings. So yes, you can change the flush volume. So this waste pile could have been much smaller if I knew about that, but you want to be careful when adjusting flush volume because you might get color bleeding mixing your colors. So, or if I go from a white to a black and then my flush volume's too low, you'll probably get some sort of gray color bleeding in. So that's definitely something to think about. But yes, you can change the flush volume. That's my little update for you guys on the Cobra S1. I wanna talk about pricing real quick. This guy is on pre-order right now, early bird price for $5.99 and that gets you the Cobra S1 and the Ace Pro unit. Compared to the P1S, the P1S is $7.99 plus the combo with their AMS unit. But let me know what you guys think down below. Do you guys like the quality of this print? I think it's pretty acceptable for a Core XY that's $5.99. The only thing that went wrong with this was that little tiny overhang, but I think that's the model itself was just slightly, you can see the other one did good, but that one was slightly more at an angle. But everything else was pretty good, I think. We figured out you can adjust the flush volume inside of 
the ACE settings while it's printing. So that's a big plus. So far, the ACE Pro unit itself has been working flawlessly except for my initial problem in the first video where this slot didn't want to work out. So what I did to fix that was I loaded up the second slot and then um, I think it was just something to do with the motor's rotation. But once I loaded the second slot, all the other slots were working fine. I, with, I never had a problem with the third or fourth slot. It was just the first slot that I had to push in a little bit harder. But now it's working just as expected. There's no problems. I think it was just from shipping. It had to kind of align itself a little bit with all the motors and, and all the spinning parts in there. It had to kind of align itself. So that's my guess on that. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to be posting more updates soon. Uh, I'm going to start another print. I'm going to go look around for some files. I'm going to be doing more multicolor prints on this. So stay tuned. Follow me on the Instagram as well. That's where my main page is. I'm not very active on anything else, mainly on Instagram. But yeah, guys, I actually really enjoy this printer. For $5.99, it's not a bad choice. And it definitely can print. So that's good. So stay tuned for my updates. And thank you so much for watching.